Hello, I'm Mark Colley. You're watching the Nashville Country Club. My, I had a lot of reasons, personal reasons, for wanting to reach out and try to take music into the prisons and uh, into Brushy Mountain in particular. But uh, it's no, uh, I mean, it's obvious that with my friendship with John, with Johnny Cash and uh, Merle Haggard, uh, knowing their stories and uh, knowing how much Johnny's uh, visit in '58 or '59 affected Merle's life, I thought it might be a, something I could do that would be important, maybe try to help somebody with a song, you know. Well, the early, the first months, the early months when I was traveling up there was just myself and a guitar. And uh, then when I, Tony Brown and I conversed about it, he decided we could put a show on a real country rock and roll show. Uh, I, Tony asked a few people, and I did too. And we had Kelly Willis and Gate Mouth Brown and Tim McGraw and a band of rock and roll band from heaven. You know? Well, it took 15 years to get the documentary finished. I mean, ultimately, there's a long story behind that. But what began, I thought, is maybe a two-year, three-year process. I wound up before it was finished, the documentary and the concert and the record. We got the record finished. We got the, the performances, you know, all on tape. But the project kind of got derailed with, you know, music business shifts and politics. And it took a while to get the project back on track. And a few years later, when I was able to recover the film from the documentary, found out it had been underwater for two weeks during the Nashville flood. Oh. So we spent the next year and a half finding ways to restore the film frame by frame. and wow. That was painstaking I can and expensive. But <laughs> I was at the same time staying in touch with a lot of people that I was yeah. had met, yeah. a lot of the guys who were yeah. guests at Brushy Mountain. and I realized uh, that Tammy and I realized that the story was different now. It wasn't about just a of time, a few months or, or a year or two. And we wanted to go and find out if the music had changed or helped anybody. So we began to search for people who had shared their stories and songs and testimonies in the year 2000, 2001. So we set out to find them, and we did, many of them. And we filmed those interviews. And having now the documentary complete and the record, uh, as they were supposed to be, you know, sort of, partners and it was supposed to be a you know, package thing yeah. so the music will make more sense if you see the film and if you see the film then the music then it'll all hopefully make some sense and it'll do some good i mean my ultimate uh call to do this was ultimately to try to make one life better to maybe shine some light into a dark place and i believe we've done that and i believe it's continuing to do that uh, with the messages and the, and the response we're getting. And that's my hope. I mean, God can use anybody, even a hillbilly singer like me. And I just basically uh, sort of open the door and let some light in. Oh, you can get on my website. I think you can go online and find out anything you want to about me, things I don't even know about me. Yeah. So, yeah, I would do that.